Hallelujah. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, we continue our class. I have some problem projecting my slideshow to the projector. I don't know why. Who is any technical person in the back who can help with my Mac? Uh, maybe if you can, anyone can try to sort it out for me. Without a computer. Computer is not the most important thing, right? The Bible is. So let's uh, continue the class. Uh, I think I gave you one homework, right? Are you working on your homework already or you, uh, you have done? How many of you have finished your homework about finding all the vanities from reading the scripture? There's only a few chapters, right? How many of you have finished already? Okay, that's good. Now I'm going to give you a real homework right now. That one is only a, a warm up. <laughs> You want more? Okay. I <laughs> uh, actually, this one is a more reflective homework. So you write it down. I want you to write down or share with me moments of moments that you feel you were extremely empty or futile or, or meaningless. So is a uh, write a moment. Share with me a moment or moments that you felt really really empty yeah so it's a very personal reflective journal i'll read it myself right i'll read it myself I'll see see whether your emptiness was the same as my emptiness when i was your age <laughs> uh, so it, it's good to reflect about it right see whether whether you have uh trying to do something you have achieved but suddenly you feel you don't you're lost or you are or you were so empty because of something that you you didn't have or you had it so you can just write so i have tonight you, know, you have tomorrow noon hour that study you can you can share about that okay now let's continue our our class let's turn to the book of ecclesiastes ecclesiastes chapter we were we're still in chapter one now chapter one is it working now? Okay, great. What do you do? Settings. Okay, great. Thank you. Hmm. It's a little bit crowded here. So. So, is it possible to retract it? Okay, can you remove it for now? Thank you. So helpful. Okay, great. Perfect. Now, in chapter one, we've been talking about there's nothing new under the sun. Uh, it's, as we mentioned, chapter one, verse, verse 10, uh, verse nine. Chapter one, verse nine. Uh, there's nothing new under the sun. It's not talking about the advancement of technology or, or new, new gadgets or, or new fashion. It's not talking about that. When there's talk, nothing un, is, uh, is new under the sun, it's rather talking about human problems, human limitations, or human keep repeating its own failure. Uh, so there's nothing new. Just like what I shared during the prayer session, 2,000 years ago, there was sexual immorality, and that's the killer of the faith of members. 2,000 years later, we're still having human society, we're still having this problem of sexual immorality. But with the ap application of technology, which makes temptation is even more accessible, more easily influencing your life than 2,000 years ago. But the nature of human life, of uh, human nature, nothing is new. For example, 2,000 years ago, people were greedy. Today, the same, same greediness. People were selfish. Today, still are selfish. So there's nothing new. If you use this spiritual perspective to see, you can understand. Uh, let's continue to read chapter one. Uh, chapter one, verse 10 and 11. Uh, chapter one, verse 10 and 11. Uh, sister, you please start.
okay, the generation, come generation go, but basically, generation will be forgotten. No matter how great you are, sooner or later, you'll be forgotten somehow. Let me ask you, how many of you know the name of your grandparents? Very good. Full name, uh, not just granny, okay, or, or, the, or the last name, okay. <laughs> how many of you know the name of a great-grandparents? Or have ever seen or met him or her? Very few, is it? Oh, yeah, very, very blurry images. How about how many of you know the name of your great-great-grandparents? Unless you have a family tree or genealogy from a famous family. Otherwise, after a while, people, for, people forget about the previous generation. Now you all like taking pictures, right? Nowadays with Facebook or Instagram or all those, people are taking thousands of pictures every day or every week, right? In the past, people take pictures, they printed it out. Right? In, my, in my ages, when I attend NYTS, I bring like a, a four coda film, and I talk, 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 all the pictures, and I go back and I photo finish all the pictures and put it in my, my photo album. Everybody, I think I'm sure your parents have a lot of photo album too. They go vacationing, uh, or when you were small, they took a picture for you, right? So now think about this. One day, if your parent pass away, right, they will left so many photo albums. Do you think you will keep it? Sure, right? Why not? And there's some nice memory. Well, basically, maybe you will keep the one you ha have you inside, or related to you. Well, if it's a 10 or 20, 20 big photo album, right? I'm, I'm sure you won't keep all of them. You kind of screen it, right? Oh, that's related to me. Oh, I was a baby. I was inside. Okay, I'll keep it. Oh, okay, but otherwise, those are too far away. Maybe you have no space. Okay, think about that in the future. You have kids and you pass away. Do you think your children will keep your parents' album? Very unlikely. I met a brother in uh, in the church, he lived with his uh, his father. His father was eighty some years old, and he himself has kids, right? And his father hang the picture of his parents and his parents' parents. That means four or five generation picture. You know, from the Qing Dynasty. You know, Qing Dynasty, people with the have the long hair. All the men have long hair. So. The brother, his father is living with him. His father was 80-something. And that 80-something brother years old, brothers has like three pictures. His father, uh, grandparent, and, and great-grandparents. And after the 80-something years old, old brother, the old brother died. Do you know what his son did? Immediately removed all the old pictures. <laughs> yeah, because it's no use, right? We, I don't know him. I don't know all this great ancestor. Why keeping the pictures at home? Maybe for, for the old man, it's important, but for the younger that generation, it's no more important. So what does it mean? Life is like this. You think, oh, you take a picture, somebody really cares, right? You post it, people say, give you a like or something, right? <laughs> if, you be, if people don't post like, you, you feel depressed, right? But sure, people will forget about you sooner or later. Now maybe you post a picture, you have 10 likes or 100 likes, you're very happy. But sooner or later, nobody cares who, what you post, where you go for vacation, who cares, right? Nowadays, people post a lot of pictures about what they eat. You know, nowadays, people say when, they, when you go out for dinner, who eat first? Cell phone eat first, right? <laughs> don't eat, don't eat, right? Let's take a picture. Come on. And then you post a picture. Oh, where do you go? What restaurant? What kind of food or vacation? Nobody will care about what. Maybe some of your friends, just because of courtesy, right? You post it. Okay, I have to press a like, but actually I don't really like it. It's true, right? You did the same thing, all right? But after a while, nobody cares about what you did, right? Where you go for vacation, what you ate, nobody cares, right? People forget about you. Your children, maybe they still remember you, but your grandchildren, not very likely they remember you. If you're so old, you have great grandchildren, they'll definitely forget about you, right? They'll know that, oh, yeah, I know somebody, but they don't even know your name. So this is the fact. So Solomon, when you think about this, he feels very empty. Well, I'm so famous now, but sooner or later, people kind of forget about me. 
Well, most people forget about him. Of course, not, if not because of studying the Bible, we will, nobody will even mention about him. Right? So, and verse 12, verse 12. Uh, actually, let's go back to verse 8 first, huh? verse 8. Verse 8, he mentioned about that eyes are seeing, but you are not satisfied. Your hearing is not filled up. Uh, so, what does it tell us really? Here tell us that really desire cannot be truly satisfied. This is a very important point he mentioned. Physical desire can never be truly satisfied. You see a lot, but after a while, you still feel not satisfied. You, 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 you listen, but you still feel not satisfied. You cannot have it all. Now, that is the feeling that sometimes that we may have. Right? How many of you really long to buy something, right? But after you bought that something, and then you, after a while, immediately you feel that, actually, I need something more. Uh, depends on what you're talking about, right? For example, sister. You say, okay, I'm just, li-, there's a saying that sister always needing just one more pair of shoes. Right? Do you have enough? Yeah, I need one more pair. And then after you bought it, what happened next week? Oh, something new has come up. Or brothers, camera, computer, cell phone, never ending. After I got iPhone 6, and then I think about, oh no, 6, 6, what, 6S, or 6 Plus, 6 Plus S, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's coming soon, right, in a few months, and then my, my new phone will become obsolete very soon, right? So you're never ending. Things are just never ending. You pursue it, you seek after it, you'll not be happy, even though you have it, right? Now, from verse 12, uh, verse 12, uh, next please, look at this. Continue, 13. Okay, he examine, he uses limited wisdom to examine un- everything that people does. It's so toil and extreme labor. Now, brother and sister, you are 20-something, right? 18, 20, 20 20-something. Now, I don't know how much you feel about life. How many of you already feel life is so tiring? Any of you? Oh, so many. <laughs> wow, you're, you're so philosophical. In your age, I, I feel nothing. I say, oh, just happy, happy every day. You already feel life is so tired. Wow. Then you don't have to study a book of Ecclesiastes, right? You know the truth already. Why you feel so that? Why, why you feel that way? I think because of, how many of you feel really tired because of your studies? Right? Never ending tasks and fulfill parent expectation and people compare to you, ask you, oh, what school do you go, GPA and oh, tired of studying. How many of you are really tired of working part-time job plus studying at the same time? Wow. You work part-time job, right? How many part-time jobs you're working? Five, two, wow, really, uh, you're a superwoman. Well, it's not easy, right? And how many are really tired of doing holy work? You know, our church gave me like 10 different assignments. Every Sabbath day, I was, <laughs> I was so busy. I was so tired. Uh, nobody raised hand, wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's correct, because it's not under the sun, right? When you work for God, it's not, suffo- it's some- not something you're under the sun. It's not falling into this category. When Solomon said life is extremely tiring and, and this kind of uh, labor and toil has not much meaning, it's, it's under the sun. That means physical, nothing to do with God, like, uh, like your job. You know, some, how many of you, your parents, really work like a cow or, or like a machine, never stop, even no weekend? How many of you, your parents has no weekend almost? Over time, over time, not only church, right, but, but, but a job. Worldly job somehow. Right? Yeah, there are only two kinds of jobs, right? One is using your labor to earn money. Of course, there are many different kinds of jobs, but you can categorize two ways. One is to use your physical labor to earn money, including your moving stuff, you're repairing things for people, or you are, you are, you are cooking in the kitchen, you climb up and down, uh, you're using your labor. There's one kind of toil, right? Another kind of toil is using your the brain, uh, highly intellectual, 
but because of even though you don't use your labor, your tummy is getting bigger. But 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 mentally, you can feel really tired. You feel like oh, worrying, worrying. How many of you have seen your parents getting more and more white hair recently, or losing hair? <laughs> wow, you see, because of the job, it's really stressful, right? All of you still have a lot of hair. Don't worry. I I feel my hair is losing a bit, and and my white hair is coming out. So it's because of toil. No matter it's a physical toil or or, or mental or intellectual or stress, it's giving you a lot of hardship. Why? Because it's God who gave people. And who, who can tell me why God put human in this kind of situation? Why God allow or put people in this kind of heavy toil? What's the reason? There's one very simple reason. Since when? Hmm? Yeah, Adam and Eve. Because eight. Eve ate that forbidden fruit, so put us into all this trouble. So emptiness, actually related to sin, put it down. Emptiness or meaningless of life is related to sin in our life in this world. God didn't make this world empty or labor toilsome. It is sin that has the effect. That caused such an unending human labor. Everything about this is quite meaningless, right? Okay, now you just ate, right? Of course, the meal is free. Free. But think about this: you have to work. You work so hard, you earn money, and then you buy food. You ate it. After a few hours, you're hungry again. And then you next morning you have to go to work just to earn money, just to eat at the evening. And then after a few hours, you go to the toilet. You become hungry again, <laughs> and your whole life is doing this: ah, uh, eating, go to the toilet, work, eating, go to the toilet, work, just to find something else to eat so that you can go to the toilet. <laughs> and then next morning you have to work again. So Solomon think about like this is wow. If you think like this, life without God, life without true meaning is really empty. Toil and labor is really meaningless. And verse fourteen, verse fourteen and fifteen. Next, please. Next, oh, this is fourteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Fifteen. Now, another emptiness that he saw. Not only labor is empty, right? Not only enjoyment is empty, but he saw something is empty. What is it called? The fact that he cannot change anything is emptiness. In Chinese, it's called 很无奈 If you understand Chinese, you understand what I'm talking about. 很无奈 huh? I don't know in English how to put it. How the who is good in English may give give it worse. But actually, it's the sense of helpless. Yes, helpless is the word. Helplessness. You say, well, you know, if you have wisdom, you, you think differently. You look at things. You know what is the problem, but you cannot change it, right? Even as powerful as Solomon, as smart as he was, but he could not change many things. He saw many problems in this society. He couldn't change it. He couldn't change injustice. He couldn't change human behavior. You can study human behavior, right? Who study psychology here? Anyone psychology major? Oh, good! You know human behavior more than us. <laughs> you can study human behavior, but you can hardly change any human behavior. Human behavior two thousand years ago is not much different than what we are doing now. Of course, the form, time, and space is different, but basically, we are the same species, same weaknesses, same problem. So we cannot change it. So if you are Fail to change something, you're helpless, and it's emptiness. Then, if you cannot change it, why you work so hard? Right? Why to be smarter? Why to be more wise? If you, overall, you cannot change it. It's true. Why do you study? Why do you go to university? Right? If people ask you, you go to interview or your university interview you. Why do you want to come to our school? Why do you want to study? What do you say? What a standard answer. Of course, in your heart, you think about different answer, right? <laughs> in your heart, you think, that, "Oh, I want to go to your university because I want to get a good job, good pay, good money." <laughs> But of course, on the surface, you say, "Oh, I want to go to university because of knowledge, nobleness, 
I want to change the world, right? Knowledge can change the world, give us power, right? So I want to be part of the future generation. <laughs> this, is, this is a really standard answer. But truly, after you study all these books in the university, knowledge, all the courses, do you think you can change the world? Can you change the world? Not much, you can change. How about technology? Some people say, whoa, why do you study so hard engineering, computers, faster computer, and a faster airplane, go to the outer space? Why? I want to change human life. With new technology, our life is different. Well, in a sense, it's different that you waste more time on gadgets. Right? You save a lot of time, but you waste a lot of even more time. Isn't it? Do you agree? Technology saves you like maybe two hours a day. But because of technology, it wastes you five hours on the other area. Isn't it? Your, your smartphone helps you to do a lot of things, save you instead of going to the bank. You can transfer money, pressing a few buttons, right? But at the same time, how, much, how many hours your, cell phone, your, your smartphone is wasting you? Hours. Your phone has become smarter, and then you become more dumb, right? You remember no telephone numbers, right? You're, you're, you're not sociable anymore because you just keep texting. You, you neglect your parents. You cannot focus in church service, right? You can type, but you cannot remember. Right? You have a big hard drive, but you have a very you, are, you have a diminishing <laughs> memory, <laughs> right? You read a lot of knowledge, but you have less understanding. Is it true? Yes, we become dumber, more dumb. So you cannot change things. Human behavior will never change. Using worldly knowledge, worldly technology can never solve spiritual problem. Write this down. It's very important. This what he said. What is crooked cannot be straightened. What is lacking cannot be filled. I'm not saying that going to school is useless, right? Don't go home and tell your mom. You say, you know, there's a preacher from Canada. He's really good, right? He tell me, oh, emptiness going to school. Uh, going to school cannot change the future, right? So I don't have to go to college and I can quit. Don't quote me like this, okay? I warn you again. If you, if you quote me, tell the parents, I'll, I'll go after you, okay? Don't quote me saying that, oh, school is nothing, you know, future is nothing, just, just pray every day. <laughs> or go to NYTS next year. This is not the theme of the book of Ecclesiastes, right? Yeah, you still have to do your part, but you must understand. If you want to change the world, change human life, true satisfaction, the world cannot give it to you. But still, you have to do it. <laughs> because nobody will feed you in the future. You have to feed yourself. Understand? Oh. You have to feed yourself, so you still have to study. You still have to work. But those cannot bring true joy. Those cannot change the world, cannot save the world. Right? Of course, there's something else can. Uh, let's read uh, 16 to 17. Next, please. Sister, there, 16, 17. What's your name? Jimmy? Oh, yes. Yes, please read. Yes, 16. We just keep on reading. Uh. Now, um, mm -hmm. continue. Oh, verse 18, we finished, right? Thank you. So remember, chapter 1 is a general introduction. So he mentioned about that many things are futile or, or vanity. So he mentioned another thing is vanity, is wisdom and knowledge. Wisdom and knowledge is also vanity. Uh, and of course, the wisdom he mentioned here is not the spiritual wisdom that we are talking about. It's the wisdom from the world. He said that, well, the wisdom that he had, he used it to observe the world and he obtained a lot of knowledge and tried to apply it. And then he even observed, verse 17, he said, well, he examined wisdom and fully and madness and he still think that these are chasing after the wind. Underline that phrase, chasing after the wind. You can count how many times. He said, chasing 
after the wind. You try to get knowledge, but it's chasing after the wind. What does it mean? What does it truly mean? Of course, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't go for your PhD or master. As I said, if you really like it, if you enjoy it, if you have a goal to become an academic, go ahead. It's good for you, right? If you, because this is your worldly duty, responsibility. If you want academic as your living, earn your bread and try to find some knowledge. But those, after a while, after a long while, will bring you no true value to eternity. He said chasing after the wind does mean he just seems he grabbed it, but actually he had nothing. It's not really satisfying. Why did he say so? Why did he say so? Uh, verse 18. Now, first of all, let's, let's look at this, right? Verse 17. He said he compared wisdom to two things. What did he compare wisdom to? Hmm? Madness and what? Folly. Now, why you compare wisdom and madness and folly? Have you heard about a saying that actually genius and what crazy people, they are very alike. They're just slightly different. Have you heard about that, some saying like that? 天才与什么疯子啊,差一点点而已. Genius and, and mad, mad, mad guy, they are very close. All right, very close. Actually, scientists, recently I read an article prove that. They say that for those who are very creative, they are very super creative, like artists, like scientists, or, 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 or writer. They are so smart and so creative. Actually, the gene, the gene have some trend that actually in the family, there's someone who has depression or schizophrenia. <laughs> Or have you heard of, read about the article, right? For example, if you are really smart, you, you are very creative in art or science or whatever, you are really outstanding. But your family, maybe you got some family member who is depressed or schizophrenia, you almost go to mental hospital. Look at Van Gogh, you know Van Gogh? Van Gogh, you like his painting? He was a genius. Even in today's term, the painting that he used, the style, the color, the lights that he used, right? He was a genius, creative. In terms of art, he was so smart. But what happened? What is his ending? He shoot himself, right? He killed himself. His brother also killed himself. If you know art history, you know, terrible. You know, sometimes genius, so-called humanly so wise, is so close to being madness. So that's why Solomon, you know, 2,000, actually almost 3,000 years ago, he mentioned worldly wisdom, smartness, or oh, wildness is so close to madness. It's, it's, it's so close, so dangerous, <laughs> right? It's truly when you are so smart, if you are so wise, what will, what will you do? You think a lot, right? If you are a very simple person, you don't think, right? You just eat, sleep, and work, and play basketball, play video game. You don't think about life that much, right? But every day you think about life, what happened? At the end, oh, you say, wow, what is life? And it's so, so overwhelmed, right? But you're so simple, you don't, you don't think much about future. You, every day you're happy. Here, that's why in verse 18 said, let's read verse 18, very important. Let's read it together. Underline this one, two, three. Now, this is the reason why knowledge in the world, wisdom, is emptiness. And once again, let me warn you again, don't quote me of quoting this verse, telling your parents that you don't need to go to school, <laughs> or don't have a study, or don't this, use, using this verse as a justification of your failing your exam, okay? Because don't tell your dad, I don't want worries, I don't want trouble. That's why I don't want to go to school. You're lazy, if you say this. You're just lazy, pure lazy, and irresponsible. But why he said this? He just wanted to explain the nature of worldly knowledge. 
For example, the more you know, the more worry you have. That actually is true, right? It's very true. Now, a farmer or a very poor person living in the middle of the jungle of Africa, in the forest, I met a lot of those people when I was there working as a missionary. They were happy every day. Why? They're just thinking about it. Just all they worry is whether their crops will grow well. If the crops go well, they will have money and they'll eat. They'll be satisfied and they're happy. That's all they worry. But now, living in USA, different setting. What do you worry? You worry about what? Global warming. <laughs> How many of you worry, 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 worry about global warming every night? <laughs> well, if you're living in like a Vancouver, you really should, or, or Seattle, uh, living near the sea, you should worry about global warming, right? If you buy a house in the future, don't try to buy too close to the water. Even though you have a nice ocean view, right? but I tell you in the future, uh, hard to guarantee whether your house will be so wet. Uh, because of global warming, water level are rising. Now, how many worry about, there are a lot of things you can worry about if you have knowledge. The food you ate, the food you eat, the food you eat every day. You know, if you know, if you read newspaper, nowadays you, you're scared of eating anything. Why? For example, if you eat meat, what to worry about? You say you like beef, how many of you really like meat? Huh? Guys, right? Yeah, me too. I used to, but no anymore. Yeah. Why meat are dangerous nowadays? Why? Because you know the chicken. You know, uh, the, if you know, you read newspapers. Say, wow, how do you feed the chicken? Wow, they lock them up and they feed them. I don't whatever <laughs> chemicals or the beef. You give them injection. They feed them with something not hygienic. Okay, if you say meat is no good, how about veggie? Right, sister like veggie, right? <laughs> no. Oh, keep you slim, keep you healthy. But now that veggie, if you, if you read a lot of uh, journal, you worry about veggie, why? Pesticide, right? Or GM product, genetically modified, you ask, is it organic or not? I'm not eating non inorganic food, right? <laughs> is it genetic genetically modified? Or what else you can worry so much about? Uh, you say, okay, if you cannot eat meat, if you cannot eat veggie, how about eggs? All right, eggs, okay, okay. If you, if you read a lot of health journals, say, well, sometimes eggs is not good for you. Okay, then how about milk? I like to drink milk. Say, no, milk is not good for you. Wow, everything. You, you read the journal, say, okay, I like coffee. No, coffee, coffee is not good for you. <laughs> and then next month, another journal come out, oh, coffee is good for you. <laughs> you say, wow, driving me crazy. How about water? If I don't eat anything, I drink water. Water is not good for you. <laughs> it's polluted. <laughs> right? So if you trust all you read, everything you know, right? Actually, at the end, you, you starve to death. Just eat. Don't think. <laughs> right? Don't eat too much. Right? Just moderate. Don't worry. But the more you know, actually, the more you know, the more you worry. And the more you are sad. And by knowing more, you cannot really change the world, this physical knowledge. So what's the point? That's why the preacher, because he was so smart, people who are, have no thinking will not think about this. But because he has so much thinking, he, he contemplates about all this situation. He was so sad. Now, after thinking all this serious stuff, if, if knowledge or wisdom cannot give me happiness, then he go back, he try, about making his flesh happy, right? If, mental, if intellectually, mentally, I cannot be very happy, well, at least I have this body, right? And my body enjoy nice feeling. So how about from chapter two, he tried to, he focused on making his body, his physical self happy. Uh, chapter two, uh, verse, verse one to three. Verse, next, please. Chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. Now, chapter 2, verse 3, 
he started to uh, embark a journey of searching what must one do in this life to be so called good. Right? If I cannot, if he think too much, he didn't have answer. Then at least he want to have, make himself happy because he has the money to do it, he has the resources to do it. Of course, when you have no resources, you cannot please your physical self. You just work. And eating is your basic need, but no other enjoyment. But when a society is more advanced, it's not just about eating a free meal and you're happy. Think about more. So the preacher, he started to think that, let me test what else can I do? Now the first test that he did, what did he do? Verse three, what did he use? What did he use to make himself, his body happy a little bit? What did he use, sister? What did he drink? Wine, alcohol. So Solomon was using, doing an experiment. Actually, he was trying to find out how much he need to drink in order to see that he can be very happy. How much can he drink? but not losing control. He's a smart guy. He hold up, he said, if you read verse three, right? If you read verse three, he's not doing unlimited drinking. He's using his own guidance, his wisdom to guide him because he knows that every day you get drunk is not feeling well. Right? How many of you, your friend, are really getting drunk every Friday? They invite you to go there getting drunk and throwing up. No, no, our brother is so pure here. Or no wealthy friend who want to get drunk. How many sisters, how many of your, your peers really enjoy drinking, a drinking party? Oh. When do they usually drink? Is it Friday night or a Saturday? Saturday weekend? Yeah, drinking party. Right? Oh. Usually in campus, university student, they enjoy drinking so much. I know some youth, they enjoy drinking. How many of you know any church people enjoy drinking? You look at their Facebook, you discover, right? Wow, dancing or drinking party. So it's hard to understand why people like drinking if you don't drink. But for the people who drink, I, I think there may be uh, some kind of, uh, I, personally, I don't enjoy drinking at all. I have allergy, allergy. Uh, I think it's God who make me having this allergy thing. <laughs> uh, Many years ago, I was in the airplane, and then the first time I go for an international flight, they offer free red wine. I never have tasted red wine. I said, wow, free? Are you sure it's free? Yes, it's free. Okay, I want it. Okay, I'm gonna drink it. Wow, it tastes okay. Not as good as Coke for me, <laughs> but still manageable. And after that, wow, my whole skin, oh, like all the rashes coming out. I say, oh, God would make me doesn't enjoy drinking. It's good, save me money, <laughs> save me temptation. So I really don't enjoy it. Of course, I can drink it, but I don't enjoy it, especially if you have allergy. But for some people who like drinking, the reason is to know why they enjoy drinking. Anyone? You used to like drinking before? Be honest, come on. Okay, what's the reason why, why you, 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 you enjoy drinking before? Brother, what's your name? Huh? <laughs> Don't scare me. Your name is huh? Jack. Jack, okay. So what was the reason that young people enjoy drinking? Don't talk about you yourself, right? Too personal. But why do young people enjoy drinking? Just drink. Okay. Sorry, you still what? You feel empty. You felt empty, yes. So drinking can lower the emptiness or have you forget something, right? Yeah, that's, that's one reason. When people drink, they forget temporarily the, the reality. It's a, it's, a, it's a sense of escape, right? People, people do escape from reality. Some people use video game to escape. If you're not happy with your family life, if you're not happy with your parents, sibling, you want to escape, of course you cannot break the window and run away, right? Yeah, because you know where to go. <laughs> so use a video game is a, is a kind of escape, right? Drinking is a kind of escape when you drink, the you know, alcohol 
slow down all your nerves and make you forget about your trouble temporarily. Am I right? Yes. What other reason people like drinking or enjoy drinking? Yeah? Sorry? Or oh, free beer on the plane. Yeah, free is enjoyable, right? <laughs> but in most cases, you have to buy your own alcohol, right? So why people enjoy drinking? I think drinking also make you relax. Yeah, make you relax. Oh, uh, yeah, after a few cups, then you, you just start relaxing. And then you talk the things that you shouldn't, shouldn't be talking. <laughs> or, or tell people secrets that you shouldn't be telling. Uh, when you drink, you become bold and you start talking loud and you totally relax. So for Solomon, he knows that the effect of alcohol, right? So he kind of trying to do some controlled drinking. He tested, how much can I drink so that I feel so happy, but at the same time, I'm not totally losing control. Because he said, well, my wisdom is still guiding me. He's very smart. He know that if you drink unlimitedly, what will happen? <laughs> you just throw up, right? Just what, hangover? Is it called hangover or something? Next morning, how many of you has experienced a hangover? Yeah, how did it feel? <laughs> it's okay, I like this brother, he's so honest. He's the most honest of us all here, right? How do you feel when you, when next morning hangover? <laughs> Just so empty, right? More empty? <laughs> Headaches, stomach, stomach. Irritation, nausea, yeah. So actually, alcohol effect is very negative if you drink it too much. And of course, many negative effects can associate. But why people enjoy drinking? Because people empty. They try to find a way to forget about reality. So Solomon, I mean the preacher, was uh, trying to test a little bit. And he was quite smart that he know drinking provide no answer. It can make his body a little bit happier, but actually, it's quite empty overall. So he decided not to go too much further. So, well, we try, we know, but we know that it doesn't work. So, just like the Bible said, instead of filling with alcohol, what should we be filled to fill with? Holy Spirit, yes. Holy Spirit doesn't take money. Holy Spirit will not destroy you. There's no hangover, with no side effect, no negative effect. But Holy Spirit will serve the similar effect of controlling you. Alcohol control you in a negative way. But Holy Spirit control you in a positive way. Edifying way. So, if you do enjoy drinking, it's time to think, uh, think about quitting. Or if you, next time, if you attempt it for a drink, you say, Sorry, I'm not interested. So why? I have the Holy Spirit. Why don't you drinking? <laughs> right? Of course you can say I have an allergy if you do have like me. So that is it's not that we cannot or not allow to drink, right? Don't don't think like that, oh I'm a Christian, I'm not even allowed one one zip or something. You can drink, but it's not good, it's not you don't need it. You don't need alcohol to keep you happy. You tell them I don't need to drink. It's not that I cannot drink. Right? Of course, if you say, you can, if you can, if you drink, you say, no, I don't need to. I can drink, but I don't need to. So that is, don't say that, oh, no, I cannot drink. Uh, really, I'm not allowed. You know, TJC doesn't allow us to drink. <laughs> don't say that, okay? But you say, I don't need to drink to keep myself happy. So it's very important. Now, from verse 4, he tried another aspect of life, see whether that can make him happy. Now he keep trying. Next, please. Next is down. No. Okay, read it all the way to verse 10. Loudly, please.
Where are you now? <laughs> Ten? Ten? Thank you very much. Are you listening? Are you reading yourself? Don't, don't just let her read, right? You have to read yourself, okay? Oh. Okay, now. He has said Solomon, he start to try to use different materials, project, to make him happy. Now, who can tell me how many kind of physical and seeking or pursuit or, or enjoyment, how many different kind of physical enjoyment mentioned here? Let's try to count it, how many of them? First of all, what? Verse 4, tell us what kind of things he did. Hmm? House, big house, big house. Now, how big was his house? How big, was, how big is your house? Uh, I don't know. I've, I've been to some of your house. But I, I know some of your house are big. Right? Some of, my house is very small. Right? I know some of your house are really big. So how big is your house? Uh, 2,000 square feet, middle class, 5,000. Uh, you're pretty rich. Your parents are pretty rich, unless you are living in Texas. Right? <laughs> Right. I heard that Texas people enjoy big house. You don't have to be rich, right? right. You live in mansions. Right. But you live in LA, you have a 5,000 square feet house. Wow, your parents are rich. Wow. 10,000 square feet, how about that? Right. Wow, there's a mega house already. How big is Solomon's house? What's his house? I don't know, the Bible never specific. But how many years did he spend building his house? Do you remember? How many years he spent building the temple for God. Perfect number, easy. Well, how many? Seven years. Then how many years he spent building his own, we don't call it house, okay? There's another word for super luxurious house. It's called palace, P-A-L-A-C-E. Okay, so how many years he spent his own, he built his own palace, how many years? Come on, you don't read your Bible. How many years? Who is who read Bible? No, raise your hand. Tell me. How many years he spent is building his palace? Oh, come on, may I know? Huh? Thirteen. Thirteen. Is it correct? Let's see. Let's turn to First King. Huh? Chapter seven, verse one. First King chapter seven verse one. Who, who told me it's thirteen years? Which brother? Brother, what's your name again, brother? Sorry? Quan Shen. Thank you, Quan Shen. Counselor Mark Dang, give him extra mark during the test, huh? Because he's <laughs> give him extra point zero one mark. <laughs> uh, thirteen years, correct answer. So Solomon used thirteen years building a house. Can you imagine? His house is so big, need 13 years. Then how many square feet? I don't know. <laughs> but at least tens of thousands of square feet with extravagant fixture or renovation. And what else? Okay, let's start counting fast. Verse 4, houses, what else? What did he do with his house outside? Gardening, right? Have you been to, how many of you have been to Europe for family vacation? How many of you have been to palaces? Which palaces you been? Versailles? Okay, that's fair enough. It's a very, very beautiful. How about Packingham Palace? How many of you have been to Packingham Palace? I mean, not inside. You're not allowed to go inside. Uh, but outside, right? You see, big house. Solomon's palace is so beautiful. There's a lot of trees, nice gardening. And what else? Verse 6, he has what? He has a lot of pools, waters. Okay, where's seven? What he has? Seven, right? This is no pond in living in a 20,000 square feet, but you have to welcome it out yourself. Right? I know some people living in a 3,000 square feet house, but every day they have to clean the toilet and, <laughs> and do, the work, do, do, do the vacuuming. I, I think that doesn't make sense, right? If you can afford a 5,000 square feet house, you better hire me, right? And don't do it yourself. So for Solomon, he has such a big palace, of course he cannot do cleaning himself. He must hire a lot of servants. Servants. 
What else do he have? What and, and, and enjoyment he has? In order to provide every single meal a superior quality of different meat, he need to have a, a big livestock. I mean, a lot of cattle, sheep, ready for slaughter every day. Now, what else do he has? Verse eight. Saving. He need to have a lot of cash, money, silver, gold, and his the money he had is more than any king in his generation, and every. Every different provinces, people come to pay tribute and pay money. Uh, now, how rich is Solomon? Uh, okay. How rich is Solomon? According to the Bible, if you if you look at this slide, wow. He had twelve thousand horses, four thousand store of chariots. Now. Every year he received six, six, six talents of gold. Six, 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 right? <laughs> Why are you laughing? This number sounds so futile <laughs> and so symbolic. Six, six, six talents of gold equal to how many? Twenty-five tons. Now you need a big calculator. Nowadays, the gold price was measured in ounce, right? If you are smart enough, you have calculator, you can calculate how many ounces are there in one ton, <laughs> and then times twenty-five times today's per ounce. I think that is billions of dollars. Every year, he has twenty-five tons of gold plus some other kind of gold, not pure gold, plus he has five hundred gold sh gold shields. And they have a lot of other ivory, silver, countless items. And then even the throne he was sitting in were made of gold and ivory. The two single most precious material you can find in the ancient world was used to make his palace and his throne. Now, after all that, and verse ten is the general statement. He refrained from nothing his eyes see, wow. and he didn't stop himself from enjoying anything. Now, if your life can live like this, how many of you actually, when you read this, you have different thinking? <laughs> you different thinking, right? What's different thinking you have? You want to try, right? It's not fair. You try it. <laughs> it's I want to try. I want it, right? If you think it's empty, let's give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it right? How many of you? I know, sister. Maybe you you more like you like more about the 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 the, the gossip magazine more, or People magazine, or, or how many of you really like those magazines? No? Wow, sister, so spiritual here. That's good. Uh, usually, when you're lining up, sometimes when I line up in the grocery store, before I pay, I line up. I saw those kind of gossip magazine. I like to grab it to. I'm not buying it. I like to grab it and and take a look, right? So vanity, right? Sometimes it's just see what they what they show in the vanity. So I think, wow, they show you no know, Celine Dion's mansion in Florida, wow, the swimming pool, and then say Tom Cruise mansion in Hollywood, and then they show you all those nice houses, right? It's nice to it's nice to to visit. It's nice. To, uh, I once uh, live I, I, not live. I once visited a church member's house somewhere. You guess inside what I saw. I saw a swimming pool, but not outside. I saw a swimming pool inside her house, and I was stunned. So, wow! The first time I see a swimming pool indoor in one single member's house, and that is very amazing. Now, living in that kind of house, I think, is in in your life, you feel so good. But the fact is. You live it the first day, you feel so good, right? But live it one year. After one year, do you feel anything extra special? Well, we don't feel that much different. Just like imagine the first day you have a new car, you feel very excited. But after one month, still a little bit excited. <laughs> But after one year, old car already, right? You want to, you know, men get bored with the car so fast. So he just tells us a cycle of. You can write it down. I don't have a board. The board is there already. I, I want it always here. Okay, always here. When my class is is ready, the board is always here, so I can write something in the future from tomorrow. 
So first is the cycle of his life. Material. First, he saw something. Desire is always started by the eyes. If you see it, you want it. If you don't see it, you don't want it, right? So see something, people have it. He also want to have it. So the first step is eyes. The second step is eye. Uh, the, the, the second step is heart. His eyes saw it. Secondly, his heart won it. And then his flesh start to enjoy it. Now, not many people can do this, right? You see it, but you cannot have it. That's why I don't like going to shopping mall. You see so many good things you cannot buy at all. Right? But some people like window shopping. I don't like window shopping at all. Yeah, if you cannot buy it, why see it? Waste time, right? But Solomon, he saw it, his heart wanted to have it, and he can enjoy it. But afterward, he felt empty. Verse 11. Let's read verse 11. Next, verse 11. Now, he see that his conclusion of trying all this big project, living in the best house, have the best service, eat the best food, but the conclusion is, it's not that exciting anyway. It's not that exciting. It's just like that. Is that it? Well, it's nothing, nothing new. How many of you have been on vacation with your parents, stay in a really nice hotel? Five stars, six stars. Okay. When you enter the hotel the first night, how do you feel? Wow, so much nicer than my house, right? But after staying there three days, or maximum one week, do you feel still very excited? Well, you want to go home, right? I miss my bed, even though it's so messy. Right? Uh, so what did it tell you? Physical material enjoyment is really limited. The excitement will, will decrease over time. But what is the main reason why Solomon is not happy with all this enjoyment? There's one reason. This is called the eye factor. I'm not selling iPhone or iWatch, okay? <laughs> yeah. But you are the eye generation, so-called. The reason material cannot satisfy the heart of the preacher is because of the I factor. Let's count it. Let's see how you count it the fastest. Tell me, huh? all of you. From verse 4 to verse 10. How many I mentioned totally here? Not only here, but this is only part of the statement, right? How many I totally are there? See who can give me the correct answer. From verse 4 to verse 10. How many? Totally. 12? Okay, let's do an auction here. <laughs> Who find more than 12? You find more than 12, how many you have? Huh? 13. Are you sure I just say it or you count it? <laughs> okay, 13. How many of you find 13? Anyone more? Your mail, Tiga. Huh? Verse 4 to, yeah, from verse 4. Let's count it from verse 4, yes? 15. Wow. Are you sure? You have 15? Okay, wow, the auction is going up, right? 12, some people say 13, some people have 15. How many? Let's say council, I have the right answer, I'm sure. They studied this book before. Huh? How many? 12? Who said 12? Who have 12? How many are 13? How many are 15? Huh? No? Retract? Or just one? The right answer is. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't counted, but I know it's so many. Tonight maybe I can count it, right? But look at here, there are how many? I explored, I enlarged, I built, I planted for myself. If you counted that one too, I make garden for myself, I make for myself, I provide for myself. I did not refuse, I did not withhold. So there's so many I. So what's wrong with that, right? What's wrong with that? Anything wrong? If you do it for yourself, what's wrong? Sorry? You're going to die at some point. Yes? What else? 
What's, what's wrong with that? Remember, enjoyment itself is nothing wrong. If God gave you a good house, you live in a good house, there's nothing wrong. The problem is, when you enjoy, you started to drift away from God. That is the problem. When you drift away from God, all your life, all your focus is for yourself. And they, that make your, your heart empty. Right? You live in a house, you never think about God. God gives you so much money, you never think about how can I use it for God. Right? You just focus off your own enjoyment. You are not using these resources to help other people. Or you live a life focused on God. You can be super rich, you can jetting in and out using a private jet. Just like the super rich today, they do. But the happiness, the, the satisfaction is not there. After a while, you feel it's just like that. Right? Solomon, after he worshipped idol and all those princes left him astray, he, when he looked back, all this are just empty. It's nothing. So I think that serves as a very good reminder for us. Yes, in this life, people tell you, you no know, success means you, you want to be rich. And you are, when you are rich, you have everything. But no, when you are rich, you do the not have everything. If you are rich, you still have a God-centered life. Well, you can still enjoy it. God will help give you satisfaction. But if you are rich, but you are already far from God, then you will not be happy. Uh, you will not be happy at all. I personally know someone who is my relatives. He's not in our church member. He has everything in his whole life. He's so rich, he owns a few apartments in Hong Kong. Every apartment can, can be like a, a millions of dollars. He had a few of them. He lived a good life, he can have vacation anywhere he goes. He has the money to go anywhere he wants. Right? But at the end, what happened? He had depression. At the end, what did he do? He killed himself. So that's very sad, but that's very true. So many people can have so much money, but so empty. So tonight you continue to do your pre-reading and uh, continue to read out the chapters and finish my homework. Reflection about any emptiness that you have ever felt. Write truly, okay? Write truthfully and, and deeply. Think about your life. Okay, so let's, should I pray in silence right now, right? Is it more than And then, okay, let's all pray in silence. Amen.